Okay, my friends, here it is. The video you've been asking for, you said you were ready for it, so I'm doing it. This video is gonna show you exactly how to make the wonderful, beautiful substance called JDOM Sulfur. Now, I'm gonna say a few words about it, and then I'll take you outside, show you exactly how to make this stuff, and then we'll come back in and I'll tell you exactly how to use it with dilution rates and all of that. Now, I wanna be very clear, I did not invent this concoction. This was invented by Young Sung Chow at JDOM Natural Farming, and I will put a link in the description to his book and to his website. Uh, I am just gonna show you exactly how to make it and how to use it. Because I only put on this channel things that I know work because I've been using them for a number of years, and this is one of them. This is awesome. At the slightest outbreak of powdery mildew, apply this JDOM sulfur, gone. It also helps control and cure all sorts of things, downy mildew, uh, leaf spot, um, anthracnose on peppers, the uh, pretty much any plant disease can be affected by sulfur because sulfur has been used in agriculture for thousands of years. There's writings going back to pre-Roman times of them using it on their crops and in their homes and in their bodies as uh, natural insecticides and, and antimicrobial substance. So we're going to use this wisdom and we're going to make this stuff and then we're going to uh, apply it at a very specific ratio though so make sure that you watch to the end of the video after we make it i'll explain it to you now i do want to say that we you must use a heat resistant container and in america uh, the food grade five gallon buckets are plenty heat resist resistant enough do not use some flimsy little waste basket because it will melt okay this stuff gets hotter than boiling water so just prepare for that uh, and so you're going to need this and a wooden stick and then you want to acquire the ingredients and make sure that the ingredients are as pure as you possibly can. I will put links in the description to the exact ingredients that I use and that I recommend you use these links. But if you can't use those links, then just make sure you get the purest stuff possible. It makes a big difference, okay? So in the actual JDOM recipe, you will see if you look it up or in the book, it also calls for phyllite powder and red clay powder. But those substances are not necessary to the production of this JDOM sulfur. And so for, for simplicity, we're not going to use them in this recipe. Uh, and they're difficult to find in this country. So we're going to use sulfur, sodium hydroxide, which is lye, uh, sea salt, and water, as you will see. And so I'm just going to keep it really simple with the explanation because this could easily become a complex chemistry class. But to keep it simple, we sulfur does not dissolve in water. So we, can't, we don't just mix it with water and spray it on the crops. It, it doesn't dissolve, it's a big mess, I've tried. But you have to, you, you used to have to heat it with a big complicated process and steel barrels and stuff. But because Young Tung Chao has developed this method, now we are going to chemically heat it and dissolve it into the water. It's a very cool process. So um, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, my friends, first thing is to acquire all the proper ingredients. Now, you really want to use the purest ingredients you possibly can. And I will put a link in the description to the exact ones I'm using in this uh, video. But it is of utmost importance that you use the purest stuff possible, because otherwise you will not get the desired results, my friends. I'm telling you this from experience. Then the first thing we want to do is measure out 2,500 grams of sulfur. That's 2.5 kilograms of sulfur. We add that first. It's very important, the sequence of adding these ingredients. Next is going to be the sodium hydroxide. We're going to add 2,000 grams or 2 kilograms of sodium hydroxide. And we're going to put that directly on top of the sulfur. Okay, next ingredient is pure sea salt. Now this must be real sea salt. Himalayan or Celtic or gray sea salt, whatever it is, it cannot be table salt. It cannot have iodine. It cannot be stripped of all the other minerals. So pure sea salt, 250 grams. And we're going to add that on top of all the other powdered ingredients as the final powdered ingredient. Okay, the next step is to measure out 5,000 grams of purified water also called five liters of water. Now you want to use soft water. I'm using reverse osmosis water. You could also use distilled water or highly filtered water. The point is you do not want to use hard well water. It will not give you the result that you want. So measure out five liters of soft water. Now we want to make sure we put eye protection on before we add the water to the mixture. And then with eye protection on, we will add the uh, 
five liters of water to the powdered ingredients. Now, we're going to immediately take a wooden stick, it has to be wooden, and begin stirring this solution. You're going to see the color is going to change to a dark red sort of mahogany very quickly, and the mixture is going to begin to heat up. Now, this may be alarming at first, because you'll feel it and it will, it's gonna start getting very hot, but that's okay, that's what it's supposed to do. We are chemically melting this stuff. So you just continue stirring, but be very, very careful that you do not splash this stuff uh, on your skin or on your whatever. You really, you wanna be wearing gloves and uh, a long sleeve shirt and a mask and stuff like that. Um, so see, it started getting really hot. And so I wanted to make sure that, that um, we can do it out here in the yard. So now we're about 30 seconds into it and it is really starting to heat up a lot. As you can see, if you look at it, it's actually literally boiling. And that is the chemical reaction. That's why we have to use the um, heat safe container because it's going to get hotter than boiling water. You see, that's, that's boiling. That's because it's so hot. Now we just keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring. It's very important that you continue stirring directly at this time because if you add all the ingredients and then just sit back and watch it, it's not going to mix properly because it only does this reaction for a certain amount of time and you want to utilize this time to dissolve all the sulfur. Now I've been stirring for about five minutes straight here and you can see the chemical reaction is still happening. It is boiling, it is very, very hot. And we're gonna continue stirring because now here is a reason that it's so important to use the pure ingredients like I put the link to in the description because if you're using 98% or 97% or 90% pure sulfur, you're going to have big clumps and it's going to be a big mess and it will not dissolve properly. But using the pure stuff, it's going to all dissolve. You see, you just keep stirring, but make sure you're wearing your protective equipment while you're doing it. Now. Here I am about 15, 20 minutes into it, and the things are starting to um, die down. It's still very, very hot, but you can see that it's not boiling like it was the first 15 or 20 minutes. And so now is the time that we're going to add the additional amount of water. So now that it has stopped boiling, we're going to add an additional 3,200 grams of water. That is 3.2 liters of the purified water. Now we're going to add that. We want to make sure that we add it nice and slow so that nothing splashes. This mixture is still very, very hot. It's just not boiling anymore. And so we want to add it slowly. And that is the final uh, addition of any ingredients. So now we are going to stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it. And make sure that your neighbors don't see you looking bizarre. But here's what it looks like, my friends. Uh, it's still warm, but it's not hot. So we're going to let it rest overnight. Okay, here we are 12 hours later. I had it covered with the lid on it all night. Now I just took the lid off and you can see all reaction has stopped. The mixture is nice and cool. And now using, make sure that you're wearing protective gear, uh, go ahead and pour it into a airtight container. Now uh, you shouldn't spill it all over the place like I did, but I was just trying to show you guys so I had to make the sacrifice. But uh, glass is best and this stuff will keep indefinitely. So. You uh, make this and you're good for years to come. Here is the exact quantities needed. So take a screenshot of this so that you will know uh, exactly how much to use. Now I'll show you how to use it. Okay, so there you have made JDOM sulfur. Now, how long does it last? Pretty much indefinitely. Three, four, five years, doesn't matter. It's shelf stable. So just keep it in an airtight container in some place. Now, Here's how you want to use this stuff. Begin with 10 milliliters per gallon of water. That's two teaspoons per gallon of water. Mix that with three ounces or 90 milliliters of the wetting agent, which is Castile soap, until I show you guys how to make the JDOM wetting agent, which I will. Leave me a comment if you want me to really make that video, which I should make, but uh, three ounces which is 90 milliliters of the JDOM wetting agent or the pure Castile soap, the Dr. Bronner's, uh, and then 10 milliliters, two teaspoons of the uh, sulfur, JDOM sulfur. And then spray that at night only. In the nighttime, do not spray with any chance of sunlight. Spray it at night 
and then observe in the plants. If you see crispy edges or if you see big, big burn spots, then that's too strong for those plants. Uh, but if everything is fine, and then you can up it to 15 milliliters per gallon, which is one tablespoon per gallon of water. And that should be sufficient. So you, if you notice an issue, hit this three or four or five nights right in a row like that, uh, and then lay off. You don't wanna use this stuff all the time. It's very powerful. Uh, and we don't wanna affect any of the beneficial microbes and all that stuff. So we use it when there's an outbreak or when we see signs of an issue. And we will use this three, four, five nights right in a row and then back off for a week and see if it still persists. Most things will have been cured by this, okay? So my friends, if you benefited from this video, go ahead and leave a comment. Just the first thing that comes to mind and give it a thumbs up. Also, big shout out and thank you to everyone that is using the link in the description to make a, a donation to the PayPal or using the super thanks or whatever that little heart with that money sign is. Thank you for all of that. It is very appreciated. It helps me to continue sharing this knowledge. Also, share this video far and wide. Everyone needs to be learning this knowledge in these times, my friends.